All right. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome. It is Friday. Friday, Friday, Friday. Let me uh, adjust a couple of things right quick. Bring it down. There we go. All right. Hey, Carl and Dafferman and Becky and Letitia. Welcome. Tony. Wow. 15 people in the house already. I just started. Dope. Dope, dope, dope. So... Rain-soaked H-Town. Oof. That doesn't sound great. It is a beautiful sunny day out here for once. Somebody has not told the weather that it's Friday in North Carolina. Uh, so that's nice. Um, I think it's supposed to rain like all weekend or something. But today, bright and sunny, beautiful day. So, hooray for that. Let me get this stuff arranged here. All right, good. Skipped out of work early. Solid choice. Hey, Brian, Andrew, and Jesse. It's uh, summer in North Carolina, which for me means iced tea and a ice cube shaped like a D20. So good times there. We got that going on. Today I have uh, stuff from the Chicago Pin Show that I got. Not a huge amount of stuff, but a few things. Uh, I got a super secret ink uh, that I can reveal today. It's already been revealed a little bit, but perhaps you haven't seen it much. Or maybe we'll get you something a little better today as far as uh, looking. Um, I have some fun artwork stuff that I haven't shown um, on here before, so that's cool. So I work in the graveyard shifts your home for the live stream. Well, glad I can help out. We've got a cat sleeping in a chair over here. That's a new thing. I have two cats sleeping over here. Mr. Knows his back is hurting him again, so he's been uh, just laying around, kind of staying chill for the last couple of days. Poor guy, but if you have kind thoughts to spare, send him for Nose and his dumb back pain. Brian, what's up? Uh, already had our summer here for two days in April. That is not long enough. Kryptonite, but not ink. Oh, yeah, no, not kryptonite. Something else. So, <laughs> but yeah. Yep, that, Becky. Um, so that's fun. Uh, I didn't show it yesterday. Uh, I will show it today. And eventually I'll have a review up for it. I don't yet. It's not a thing that's available yet. So that's cool, man. Uh, that is cool. All right. Still in winter there? Yeah, didn't you get like several inches of snow or some nonsense? Announcements about swag in the Ink Dependence Store. The announcement is that I haven't put it in the Ink Dependence Store yet. Uh, I do have some stuff left, including um, I've got a couple of these awesome spring four pin rolls uh, with the purple on the inside, a little purple uh, purple tag here. I took this picture of my garden. I don't think I, I don't know if I said this or not, but I probably did. Uh, five inches of snow, that's. That's absurd. It's May. Did Sandra get hers? She has not yet. I have hers set aside, though. So don't worry about her. She'll get hers. Um, I also have several of these single pin sleeves with my nib logo on them. Sold down uh, on two or three of these at the show. That was cool. And also I have uh, left over still several of these guys, which are the uh, duo pin sleeve with my logo and stuff. Um, I have a few of those left. So these will be going up, up in the store uh, soon. I haven't uh, haven't really had a chance to do that yet. It's been it's been uh, it's been kind of busy. Um, this is the uh, so classes ended uh, the middle of last week, right before I went to Chicago, and so um, I've been kind of catching up ever since I've gotten home. Uh, I've got to get my grades in by Monday, so cool. <laughs> so that means I got a lot of stuff to do. I've probably graded a hundred or so papers this week. Um, so that's why there hasn't been any activity going on the channel except for right now, uh, that kind of thing. So I know everybody understands it's not a big deal. I'll have a bunch of stuff coming in the summer. I've got bag reviews and gear and all kinds of cool stuff I'll be doing this summer. But uh, this week has been a slow one because, you know, school stuff, my actual job, you know. Um, so, yeah, those will be in the store soon. I have to take pictures of them and figure out shipping stuff. Um, turns out it costs about four bucks to ship like just like postage to ship one of the sleet or one of the, the four pin rolls. Um, so uh, not too bad. I can probably put the regular sleeves probably like just in an envelope or something. So it probably won't cost much. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. I'm not, uh, uh, I haven't really done that yet. Actually, let me see. Uh, the other thing I started doing is I started making envelopes. So like I made this little envelope. Isn't that fun? Um, I have an envelope maker. I knows. Just go lay down, bud. I have this fun envelope maker. Um, so actually, let me see if these single pins and stuff will fit in here. Uh, 
I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I just send him this way. This is pretty tough. Um, I don't know. I haven't really decided yet. We'll have to see how it goes. Uh, but shipping is... Like, I'm new to shipping, so, you know. Careful with square envelopes? Why is that? Does this thing make anything other than square envelopes, Brian? I actually don't know. Claiming to work. Looks like you've been in the sun too long. Oh, I just got out of the shower. That's probably that's what it is. My face is always a little bit red after I got out of the shower. I think face wash or something. I don't know. They cost more to ship than ship square ones. Oh, weird. Well, hopefully the ones I sent like go out. Interesting. I've never had any of them come back, so I guess we'll see. Working in the garden? No, not for the last few days. I have been trying to go out and plant stuff over the last week, and I've put several things in the ground, so that's good, but it makes a ton of different size envelopes. I mean, it makes these, but the thing is, like, I'm starting with 8.5 by 11s, and so that really kind of, that really narrows down my opportunities for making these things, and a lot of them look like the card sizes, well, this is 4 by 6, 8 and a quarter by 8 and a quarter. And if I start with a square piece of paper, I'm going to end up with a square envelope, aren't I? I thought all these were, I've only tried making one, so I don't know has to do with the machining. Interesting. Well, I guess we'll see. Um, anyway, I haven't... Uh, I've only sent out a couple of these, and none of them have come back, so maybe they've just been giving me a... been giving me a pass, I need to mess with different sized envelopes. Um, but it seems like if I start with a square piece of paper, I'm gonna end up with a square envelope. Isn't that the way this goes? They seem like they all start out with squares. Maybe I'm making envelopes wrong. I'm not going to do an envelope making demo until I figure out how to make envelopes reliably. So, you know, use a 3 7 mark for envelopes for A5 paper. Yeah, but how big do you start out with a piece of paper? Or like, how big is your, how big is your thing? Score line 3 and 7 eighths. Are you just eyeballing it, bro? I've been trying to follow this little scale thing here and actually I don't think any of these say 3 and 7 eighths. Oh, so you start with eight and a half. So how it goes, start with square and it makes rectangle envelopes? No. Oh. I don't know. Hey, Julie, welcome. I don't know, I think there's only really one way to fold it and you kind of fold it like that, right? Well, let me, uh, let me make a note somewhere. I need a piece of paper. You would think that would be easy to find, right? Sometimes it's not. There we go. You know, a different maker? I don't know. This is that, like, we are memory keepers envelope punch board thing. Like these. I don't know. Maybe. I hope there's not more than one and I just got the one that doesn't work for me. A one, two, three punch board. Well, now I have to see if there's a different one. It has two wings that fold out. We have different ones. Mine might only make for freaking squares. Mine's the envelope punch board. Let's see. This doesn't have wings, I don't think. Nope. No wings. Hey, Evan, welcome. Let me uh, put up my Firefox so y'all can see what I'm seeing. Um, envelope punch board. That's this one. Oh, it's on sale. I could have gotten a little cheaper, I guess. I think that's what I have here. Yeah, I purchased this one. Let's see if there are other ones. 12 by 12. That's the scoreboard. Three way corner punch tools. Chewbacca sent me an image. Hold on a sec. Oh, wow. That's not at all what I have. Yeah, that's... That's way different from mine. Well, maybe I got the wrong one. <laughs> Yours does sound better, man. Um, oh, Jesse's going to help me with shipping. That's super nice. That'd be great. I just hate figuring out shipping costs and all that kind of stuff. Well, weird. All right, well, I'll, uh, what 
wonder if I can just figure that out. Now, let's see. You said you started with the seven, seven and eights, or seven, three and seven eights. All right. Let's see how it goes. Yep. Oh, it sent me a link too. What? Yeah, this is uh, this is that thing. Interesting. Boxes and bows and stuff, man. This is way better than what I have. Weird. Decorative bows, envelopes, and gift boxes. Interesting. Huh. Welp. Live and learn. First crease not in the center. Yeah, all right. All right. Well, I'll give it a shot. I bet I can probably figure it out. Ever made a box or a bow? Well, I mean, your envelopes are dope, so that's cool. Henry. All right. And you start with regular eight and a half by 11, huh? Well, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Oh, la, grocery shopping took longer than anticipated. That's okay. You're allowed to come and go, would you please? Welcome, Sarah. Welcome. Um, all right. Oh, and Mike has, you haven't tried it yet. Oh, man, I hope we didn't get the wrong one. Maybe keep it in your thing unless you want to make squares. I don't know. We'll see if I can make rectangles. Womp womp. All right. By the way, it seems as though my YouTube is doing well. I've got zero drop frames, unlike a couple of times ago when I was having all kinds of problems. So maybe YouTube got itself figured out. So that's good. Yours has two links. Yeah, good. What did I do? I've been using 12 inch squares and cutting them down to nine and a half or something. Well, I guess we'll see. I got uh, my papers all way over there. It's hard to get to. But. Stream coming nicely, that's what I like to hear. I hear the stream went really well too from Chicago. So thank you very much for all y'all, uh, to all of you who went and checked out that video. Uh, there are a ton of views on that thing. If I make envelopes without the maker, you give me an idea. Well, good. Um, that video from Chicago has kind of an absurd number of, uh, of views on it right now. So like, it's, uh, I have a pointer? Yeah, look here, uh, 2,800 views. Which is kind of a lot for a thing that's only been up a little while. I mean, the average one of these like live chats is like 600 or so. Sometimes a thousand, but around 600 really. Um, Philly, or that's Atlanta, had about 1300. Philly had like 1300 as well, and then this one 2800. So um, either Chicago is just real popular, or you know who knows. Russian bots. Hey man, I'll take it. It's because you were on there, Jesse. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Zero hotel Wi-Fi issues. Yeah, pretty much. It came in pretty well. And I didn't actually even get charged for it, which is weird. Um, I don't know why not. I definitely signed up for it and told them to charge it to the room, but I guess I didn't. So I'll take it. I will take their Wi-Fis. And then I found out, and this is hilarious, um, they had conference room Wi-Fi, but it, like, it was a huge pain in the butt to get it actually to attach to my phone. My phone would be like, oh, cool, I'll attach to the conference Wi-Fi. And then it would just like drop it. So, you know, people drink the Chicago Kool-Aid. Chicago Kool-Aid's pretty good. Hey, Julio, welcome, welcome. So, yeah, glad it worked out in Chicago. I'm glad people have been enjoying that video. Um, those are a lot of fun to do. And uh, I heard recently that it was actually my best one yet. Look, it was my mom, but she's a very discerning, uh, discerning viewer, and she does tell me when she doesn't like my videos. <laughs> so, you know, I think that's working out pretty well. So the Chicago video, thanks, uh, thanks for that. You're planning to go next year. Good, definitely go, Nate's. That's uh, Nate's Kate. Kate? Maybe I guess your name is Kate? Um, yeah, definitely go. They're great. I'm a big fan of, uh, of pin shows, uh, obviously, and I think everybody probably ought to go to them. All right, so you want to see what I got, or you want to, like, chit-chat some more? Because I'm into chit-chatting about how I fail to make envelopes, but, um, you know. As usual, make Chicago. I mean, you've got Baltimore and D.C., and you've got Atlantic, or, um, uh, Triangle coming up soon. Chicago's a nice show, but between those three, you definitely get like most of the same people anyway. Show us the stuff. Okay, 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 don't hurt me. All right, stuff coming up. 
So, now here's some stuff. This is sad stuff. My Apple Watch finally bit the dust. That thing. The, uh, the battery all, like, puffed up and stuff. Blasted the screen off. Didn't blast it off, but it pushed it up enough that it was like this. And I thought it would last a little bit, lo a little bit longer, but then it just sort of... I don't know. Doesn't work anymore. The touch doesn't work anymore. I couldn't even turn it off because you have to hold down the button and then slide a thing and the touch was dead. So, new Apple Watch time. Probably get one again tonight. We'll see how it goes. Uh, let's see. When's your show stuff? Sorry, I'm going to say stuff that's on the... Actually, I wonder if I can set up the chat to show up because I've been seeing a lot of... Let's go back to my face right quick. When I watch YouTube videos um, that are live, I've often been seeing the chat stream in the window if you want to. And I don't actually see that here. Maybe it's something you have to be on YouTube gaming for or something. I don't really know. But we'll see. Just made sure with the slacker we both feel like you're getting a steal. That's good, man. I'll go next year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, hmm. I can't really figure. I don't see any options here. What's this? Time stands, pop out chat, live chat. I want that. Hmm. Oh well. Let's just go and look at the uh, the desk right quick. Okay, so first thing, uh, <laughs> I only got like one pen. I have another pen that I got pretty close on, but um, uh, I got uh, this is a fun thing actually, and it was on the back of my. This is the first time I did it. A little good mail. I got this little stamp. This is from Anna Reiner at the well-appointed desk. This was Anna's first uh, Chicago show as an independent vendor. She usually helps out Van S or somebody like that. Uh, but uh, she was there on her own with her own table. And she had stamps and she had cool, like, old-timey staplers and stuff. And I was real into it. I almost came home with some staplers and, like, old label makers. Um, there's um, a label maker you have, like, a dial and you, like pull a lever and it goes ka-chunk and it makes the label or makes the letter i there were a couple of there those there that i almost bought and didn't but uh anyway so check out anna, anna reinhardt's uh shop for all kinds of cool stuff i knew it was gonna be from anna yeah i really like uh i like anna a lot and she had a bunch of cool stuff chicago themed uh coloring cards and all that kind of jazz um i got some uh, of these things from anderson pens these are uh nib tuning supplies like smoothing stuff these are microfiber not microfiber uh, micro mesh sanding pads and a couple of different varieties i got some shims these are for a guy jesse in our pen club so i'll be giving these to him this weekend at pen club um so there's a well-appointed desk my dead apple watch um then um i also picked up one of these these were like what kind of the talk of the show a little bit See, interesting seeing people who didn't uh, know about those old uh, yeah, diamond label makers. Yeah, man. Uh, those are pretty cool, right? Those oh, serving spoons you got from your parents that still has a label from those kachunker things. Nice. Nice. I like those kachunkers. Use it all the time and dishwash it all the time. It's still holding on. Oh, yeah, no, those don't go anywhere. So this is from um, a store called Wild Paper. No, Wild Pages. Um, they were situated across from... Let me get some more light here. Situated across from Franklin Kristoff in the ballroom. We stopped by them um, a little bit. But they made these. They make these really nice little handmade notebooks. I think they're made in kind of an interesting way. You get these two folded sections of paper. And they've got this interesting binding in the middle. Um, this is a kind of a craft papery feeling thing. Maybe not full on craft, but pretty thick anyway. And uh, New York City Dominoes. Yeah, man, that's what they were. My mom had one, and I was always playing with it. I think she made me stop playing with it. I don't know. Maybe I broke it. Uh, but I haven't seen it in a while. Uh, so you have this like nice fold out, which means you can put it in between pages. That's a good little design bit. Uh, to give yourself a bookmark or, um, I don't know, to soak up ink or something like that. This paper is pretty darn nice. It feels very smooth. It's fairly heavyweight. Um, I don't really have details on it because uh, they're a little bit cagey about where it comes from. So this is the page, wildpagesshop.com. It is apparently from the USA, the paper. I don't really know where it's uh, uh, where it's made from or you know where it comes from or whatever, but... Um, it seems pretty good. So, uh, fountain pen friendly. Yeah, here they are. This is actually the medium journal. Let's see. Yeah, medium one. So, 14 bucks. Yep, that's what I paid there. It uh, comes in a bunch of different colors. Five inches by six and a quarter. Um, yeah, it seems pretty good. 96 pages. Exceptionally smooth, bright white, fountain pen friendly paper and elastic closure. Uh, folded forages to hold loose items, etc. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty confident in this as being a good a good product, honestly. I haven't, um, 
Uh, I haven't really had a chance to use it much yet because I only just got home, but uh, I used some of the tester pages. In fact, here's a bunch of little, they had these sitting out for you to try out. Um, there's like stamped with their logo. This is actually a really good idea for a paper, like a notebook company because I mean, you don't want to like sacrifice a whole notebook necessarily for people to see how it works, but you do want people to be able to use it. So uh, this is my friend Christoph uh, 40. Uh, this is a wild test. Paper feels real nice, seems to take ink well. Uh, I haven't had any problems with um, uh, with like bleed through or anything on these little tester pages. And that's a double broad SIG, so no real problem there. 96 pages or 96 sheets, like 96 sides. Uh, I don't actually know, man. This kids have labeled everything. Not, I mean, yes, maybe. <laughs> Secret paper, uh, 96 sides. Yeah, it says 96 pages, actually, is what it says. Um, so I'm guessing it has 96, 96 pages uh, this way. And so that'll be, and it's fairly thin paper, so maybe. I mean, they got it folded in half. Um, well, let's do a little counting right quick. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, stuck together. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So twelve times four is forty-eight. So yeah, forty-eight, forty-eight uh, pieces of paper, ninety-six sides. Yep. Yeah, there you go. That's what it is, Brian. That's my quick math. <laughs> so there you go. Yep. Uh, so it works pretty well, I think. Uh, this paper works nice. It feels good to write on. It's nice and smooth. Does show uh, some shading. Get a little bit of that in there. Is it sheen. This isn't a particularly sheeny ink. Let me grab one that is, um, where is it? There we go. This will have some sheen. This is a uh, diamine uh, skull and roses. I'm also laying down a bunch of ink here, so that'll help with the uh, little uh, ink resistance test. Let that dry a little bit. Um, no bleed through actually yet. I'm getting a little, seeing a little bit of like ghosting or something. It's a lot of ink. Yeah, definitely starting to have some sheen there. Yeah, so cool. Anyway, I'm into this wild pages stuff. Uh, and 14 doesn't seem like a crazy amount of money for a smallish journal like that. Um, seems like a good little notebook. So check them out. <laughs> Just trying to finish a haul listening to Mike count. Hey, look, not everybody can count it like me. Uh, my sister, who is watching this, can count better than me. She is a math tutor now, but was a math teacher for ages. Um, so there we go. That's uh, Wild Pages. We got that. We got our good mail. Let's kind of pile these things up over here. Um, the other thing that I bought at the show, in fact, I think the only other thing I bought at the show was this. This is my only pin purchase for the show. This is a um, uh, Schaefer Legacy, which is sort of a throwback to the old PFM days. Uh, but it is a cartridge slash converter pen. It has an inlaid nib. Look at that. Real pretty. I always think these are gorgeous. Um, I could have done without the gold trim maybe, but I think the gold trim on here, going with the gold trim on this stuff is a nice combo. I'm not going to change that. Um, and then the thing that makes this, there are like three things that make it kind of special. The reason they call it a fantasy pen is because this is uh, not like an original uh, acrylic or anything from Schaefer. These are all much more staid colors. This is actually made by Franklin Kristoff uh, and then assembled out of Schaefer parts uh, by my old friend Jim Rouse. Um, he used to sell these and I never got one while he was around because I was like, well, I'll just, I'll get one later. Like, I'll find another one I like. But um, then he died and obviously there aren't any more of these. So uh, Matt Armstrong was selling his and so I bought it from him. Um, also... This will focus. Um, this is a broad oblique nib uh, that Jim did. It's nice. It's a fairly crisp oblique, which isn't usually my cup of tea, maybe. But like, if he had done this for me, he probably would have softened it out just a little bit. But uh, yeah, so I've got a. This is a broad oblique Jim nib on a pen that um, he had a hand in making, and uh, it was owned for a while by one of my friends and um, fellow like ex YouTuber. No, it's be nice. Uh, Matt Armstrong, the pen habit. So anyway, this is uh, a pen that kind of like came a long way to get into my hands, but I'm not letting that go. So uh, yeah, I don't leave too many gym nibs on the table or gym pens on the table. So this had to come home with me clearly. And the price was perfect. So no problem there. 
I think this new lady is going to make arbitrary threads and be able to do stuff like that. Uh, I totally regret never buying one of those from Jim. Dude, I did two, Tony. So thus this. Um, you see him every once in a while out in the wild. Um, and if you're interested, Tony, let me know. And like next time I find one, I'll let you know. But um, yeah, so I'm glad I got one of those. So that's uh, pretty much my whole, that's my whole haul right there. Three things. Uh, so um, not a huge amount of haul from the show itself. Um, and the reason, part of the reason anyway... Um, that I didn't have much in the way of a huge haul uh, myself is that I was actually working for a good bit of the show. Um, I worked with uh, Anderson Pens on both Saturday and Sunday, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, I like being um, Dan Don. Yeah, you can steal his. Um, I like uh, I like working behind tables at shows because it lets me just talk to people about pens, which is kind of what I'm into, um, and so that's fun. Just bought all the things from Anna. I only bought one thing from Anna, unfortunately. Um, I, I should have gotten more, but I was flying and I was out of sp space. She's like, I can ship. And I'm like, mm, it's cool. I'll get it some other time. So anyway, go find Anna's store because she's got good stuff. Um, so yeah, I was working behind Anderson Pens. I've met all kinds of cool people, including a few people that are here in the chat. How's my back? Back is totally fine. I didn't wreck myself standing still at this show somehow. Back is totally fine. My knees are slight. I'm like... And like feet were starting to hurt, but that's gonna happen when you're standing all day in the in the ballroom there. Uh, but yeah, people were very friendly. Uh, I helped some people find pens, like especially after calligraphy workshops and stuff. I'd have people come up for sketching workshops, and they're like, "Hey, I'm looking for a pen I can sketch with." And I'm like, "Cool, you can kind of probably sketch with anything, but let's like talk about what you want." And so I kind of helped steer them into things they were looking for, uh, and that's cool. Showed them like next steps, even if they weren't into that like price range, and then uh, you know that kind of thing. So. New Balance umpire shoes, huh? That's the way to go. Might be a good thing. It might be a thing I have to look into. I've also got like what I think is probably some plantar fasciitis or whatever. So my feet just kind of hurt most of the time. Uh, I think that doesn't help. But when I used to do retail, I'd stand all day and never had a problem. But there you go. How the Chicago show floor is particularly is extra brutal on feet and your feet can cur. Right, Kimberly? I don't. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird because it's padded, but. It must be padded in such a way that uh, it's uh, just kind of uncomfortable. I, I don't know, but it hurt for sure. So you know everyone in the show. Uh, I do know a lot of people at shows, Yang. I, um, I get to go to a lot of shows, fortunately. I'm real lucky that way. And uh, I'm chatty, so I get to know a lot of people. Kimberly also knows a lot of people because she's real chatty and she's like walks up to people. But that's the thing you just got to do with these shows is get to know folks. Uh, and that makes the shows a zillion times better. If you're not just there to shop, um, you're there to like talk to people and hear stories and meet people and see what's going on, then the show is just better. It just straight up is. And that's true, I think, for both introverts and extroverts. You just gotta, just gotta like put yourself out there a little bit. And uh, cause, like, there's a lot of introverts in our in our our, our hobby. So, uh, Did you know. Somebody say introvert. Hey, there's one. <laughs> He's gonna come in here and yell in the background and leave. <laughs> so. So, uh, yeah, there's, um, anyway, that's the thing to do at shows. And that's why I know everybody, because I've been going to a lot of pin shows for years. Um, <laughs> there's a cat back there. You're taking her seat. Yeah. Well, she'll be all right with that. Audrey's here, everybody. Let me move uh, move the, the chat so we can see Audrey's face a little bit. Yeah. Let's see. Move some chat here. So, yeah, I do know, uh, I do know a lot of people at shows. Um, there you go. So you chatty? Yes. Yes, you are chatty, Kimberly. Uh, oh, hey, it's Sandra's in the chat. Sandra, I got a thing for you on Sunday. So welcome. Tease. Now she came back. It's all right. It's like you don't even know me. That's true. Yeah, you got to try that uh, that doyu there, uh, Valerie. It's good stuff. Uh, I'm, gl I'm glad somebody got that um, so I didn't have to buy it. I was going to get a bottle. Even though it would have been hard to get home, but I was going to get a bottle anyway. Where'd it go? Where'd the chat go? Oh, I made it disappear. Uh-oh. -uh. I know. I, no, it's just me. I don't know how to move things. There we go. I've met a lot of people in Chicago. Yeah, Chicago is a really great social show. Um, just I don't know exactly why. Julie says hi, and Becky, and a whole bunch of other people. Hello. Scraggles is over here, too. There's a Scraggles down there. Where'd she go? Uh, she's there. There she is. Um, the bar doesn't kick us out, so it's a great place to... <laughs> yeah, all the animals follow Audrey. Well, to be fair, only one of them. Uh, followed Audrey and the rest of them are already in here so um, anyway it's a great it's a great uh, great show for that because there's all kinds of room to sit in they don't kick you out at 11 or whatever uh, they're very tolerant of us they know us pretty well there at that show 
We know the bartenders and all that kind of stuff. Ah, she Jessie says she gets to see you in, in Raleigh, exclamation I point. Know. Coming uh, up. Yeah, coming up. Aqua says chirp. Good. Chirp. <laughs> um, let's see. Two bottles. Can't be without Doyu. Yeah, I think I've only got one bottle, but... Oh, some people are saying happy petiversary, Scraggles. Oh, that's nice. It was her adoptiversary yesterday. Yeah. Uh, five nine is when we got five here. Five years ago. Five years we've had this scraggly mutt right here. So that's fun. Yeah. I would have got some Doyu in Japan, but I didn't know about its stain removal properties. I've actually never tried that, but I do hear it a lot. <laughs> uh, the bird chirped back at you, Audrey. Oh, good. That's nice. <laughs> so. <laughs> what are you two doing? Um, so this is how these uh, this cat and dog play. There's all kinds of and that kind of stuff, but they're pretty chill. So. Yeah, that's it's not a any way vicious. Yeah, yeah, no aggro there for no. sure. Um, <laughs> she has bitter legs. <laughs> Katie is bitter. Good job, Katie. Get her. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, how is Matt Armstrong? He misses reviews. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of people miss his reviews. Um, he's doing great. In fact, probably better than ever. Dude's traveling all over the place. He's uh, Craig says hello to everyone. Hey, Craig, what's up? Um, he's got... Uh, his gardening is going off the chain. That dude and I garden in very different ways. We were talking about it at the show. Um, and he tends to just like... Whatever Matt does, he goes like full on. And I tend to just sort of ease my way into things. So like... I'm going to go to a nursery that I love tomorrow. Go to plantdelights.com. They're so expensive, though, but they have good stuff. Yeah, they're expensive, but, like, they're great stuff. Um, and stuff you're not going to find anywhere else, frankly. So they're open four times a year. It's kind of an amazing joint, this Plant Delights. Not a sponsor, although I'd take a sponsorship from them. Um, and uh, Matt will go to the store and buy, like, 800 of a thing and then spend weeks planting his 800 plants. I'm, I'm not doing that. That's not my jam. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, yeah. Sandra actually went out there with us yeah. last year, so she's got some awesome stuff. Uh, I found some things that I need to get more of because I love them. I mean, I don't know. Let me pull up a little window because, hey, why not? A little plant dependence time. Uh, find the right nursery. Let me put up the Firefox. Here we go. Uh, so this is Plant Delights here. I'm going to get some sweet Kate uh, right here. This is a Tretiscantia. Um, which is the same thing as like Wandering Jew and some other things are in the same family. This is actually a pretty wilty looking sweet Kate. Yeah. Look at that thing. It's sad. Um, mine, by contrast, is real awesome. It's <laughs> right here, isn't it? Uh, do what? Isn't that out front? Uh, yeah, it's out front. Yeah, so I'm like, look at this thing. So it will it has this bright yellow foliage and it's got these bright uh, purple blooms. And it'll do this from like spring until fall. So pretty awesome. Um, this looks like it's out in full sun. It looks like it needs some water. Mine is looking a little bit better than that, but uh, I have some of this uh, brownie points. This is a Baptisia. I'm really enjoying that. It's still pretty small, but yeah, we've been enjoying it. but uh, yeah, it's fun. And the other thing I want to get is some of this, um, which I had last year, and I don't know if it made it through the winter. Um, it's this Colocasia called coffee cups. Colocasias are elephant ears. And so these are big old leaves that all point up and they gather rain and they look very cool. So I'm going to grab another one of those um, and uh, see how it goes. I did and they haven't re-sprouted yet. So I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I'm about to give up on those because they're too expensive to just die. Well, I have several that made it. Just I don't know if that... So here's the other thing, gardeners. Um, if you're like north of zone like five or six... Um, your coffee, your elephant ears might be a little dicey, but um, if you cover them and mulch them in, they're pretty good as long as they stay dry-ish. Um, but I plant them in kind of wet areas and they they melt, so I dig them up. And the thing to do with you when you dig them up is just like put them in a paper bag in the garage or put them on some uh, some um, cardboard boxes in the garage or whatever. The other thing you need to do is label them. So I put them all in different places. But I didn't label them, and so I don't know which ones they are. So, like, some of them may very well come up still, but this place isn't going to be open again until fall. So, whatever, I'll get another one. Uh, but, yeah, it is, like, 20 bucks. But I get 20 bucks worth of enjoyment out of it, for sure. Um, anyway, so those are, those are two things that are definitely on my list. I'm not going to get much, but I do want to grab a couple of those things while I'm out there. So, Baptisia is very beautiful. Good, I'm glad. Um... Yeah. Crossing areas don't get more snow. Yeah, snow. Blech. Um, hey, Richard. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Um, 
have mystery bulbs in the garage. Well, they're actually not technically a bulb, Sarah, since I know you're a, a, uh, a, um, a sciencey person, but um, yeah, kind of mystery. Yeah, yeah, they're actually in the ground, so they're fine. Um, now, I just need to wait for them to come up. Some of them were starting to like sprout and put out little bits, so they'll come up soon. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, since we're talking about a little Baptista stuff, I put it on Slack, so I've got it here. Um, I showed you that one that's not doing much. Here is another one. So this is uh, the front of my place. This is a, a Baptisia. Whoops, there we go. This is a Baptisia. I forget what it's called. It might be like Golden Towers or something like that. But this is probably four and a half, five feet tall up here at the tips. Some of it's like falling over because it's got so many blossoms. These are little phloxes down here. This is a nonsense ground cover that has little tiny blue blossoms, and so I let it be because, I don't know, it's not going to stop Baptisia from coming out, so I, I don't really care. I was trying to consider if that was something you meant to put in or if I should weed it. I almost weeded that. Um, if you weed it, it'll come back, um, but uh, it came in something probably from Marge. It's, oh. it's kind of a weed, but whatever. I think it's fine. It doesn't bother me, and it's not going to stop that thing from growing because what would... So anyway, that's some plant dependence. Mystery rhizome? Yep, pretty much a rhizome. Yeah, lots of them actually. When you dig up uh, an elephant ear at the end of the at the end of the um, in the fall, you expect there to be a bulb because it's this giant plant. Some of them are like six feet tall or something. Some of them way bigger, but mine are about that big. Um, I expected there to be a big root at the bottom. There just isn't. Um, it, there's just like rhizome. It's like it's skinnier than iris. Like it's a little tiny thing. Um, so you don't have to dig down very far, but it's there. So anyway, there you go. There's some plant uh, plant dependence for you on, uh, on on Friday. But it's too beautiful outside not to talk about plants, oh, frankly. Yeah. It's gorgeous. We've got our foxgloves blooming out there, all kinds of cool stuff. I love foxgloves. Yep. Um, and scraggles here doesn't mess with my plants, so that's good. Oh, the other thing I found in my garden recently um, <laughs> was this. Little dead baby? Animals. No, they're they not dead. Sort of they're... Look dead but they're not. Well, it's because it's still. They were squirming around and doing bunny stuff. Okay. But um, these are baby bunnies. How fun is that? I'm going to go play Pokemon with your son. That sounds good. Um, also, Scraggles doesn't bother these in the garden, which I'm glad about because I would be very sad if she brought in dead bunnies or something. But I was out weeding my, uh, my vegetable garden. Fortunately, I was weeding it with my hands and not with like a shovel. And um, yeah, found a little baby bunny nest. So we know uh, we know why that that rabbit is hanging out in our yard. Yeah, big brown. Uh, big brown the rabbit, who apparently is a lady rabbit, probably. So uh, anyway, those are pretty cool. The bunnies look delicious. Eh, I'm not gonna Aww. I'm not gonna hunt the bunnies. Uh, I'm gonna let them you know hop around. So let bunnies uh, bun. I'm gonna let those bunnies bun indeed. So there you go. All right, I have another couple of things that I got. Um, not in uh, Chicago, but. Um, definitely worth showing off. Do you want me to bring my pen in? Yeah, go ahead. Did you tell what no? Not yeah, no I did. Okay. I did. I missed the beginning. That's all right. Oh. Um, uh, oh, so this came actually while I was, uh, while I was out. I bought this from a guy named Nick on the Slack. Came in this nice piano black box. Fagionato. This is a fun thing. This is a really nice box, actually. I'm a big fan of this box. Empty now, of course. Um, Faginato, this guy, Fred Faginato, was a dude who actually, you may remember his name because he would show up in chat every once in a while and say hi. Uh, he was a, um, a really good pen and materials maker out of France. I'm trying to fold this up so it's not a mess. And um, I have reviewed a couple of his pens on the channel, but uh, he died, what was it? Jane. January he died sort of suddenly to me although I guess he'd been having problems but he had a brain tumor I think is what eventually got him and so there's uh there's not um, oh there's an Anna there hey Anna welcome welcome you all missed the beginning oh well Anna I was showing off your fun stamp and stuff and talking about the Kerchunk uh label makers uh so anyway Fred Faginato uh passed away and um so I got two pens this weekend both from uh people that uh, I liked who passed away so um, this was put up on Slack for sale, and nobody was biting on this thing, and I don't really know why, because I think it's great. This is an Arushi pen. Um, the uh, model is the, the PKS, I think. It's a Petrarch, I think is what he calls it. And um, so dogs love to barack at them. That's an awesome, uh, that's an awesome autocorrect there. 
Um, actually, uh, Scraggles totally ignores them mostly, so, you know, <laughs> it works fine. Uh, b bunnies are cute, rabbits are yummy. Well, that's cool. <laughs> so this is an Arushi pen that Fred Faginato did, and you can see, like, all kinds of interesting detail in here where you can tell where the, the layers were, and some of them are fainter than others, and I think it's totally gorgeous. It's got gold hardware, which I don't usually go for, but this is sort of a cream and brown pen. Um, what's that? It goes with it. Usually I'm, I'm not pro gold trim, but if it's right, sometimes it's just right, and this is one of those instances of just right. Yeah, this is just the right color for it. It's got a gold nib, well, gold colored steel nib. Um, he used Bach nibs, and I was not particularly enthusiastic about that, but darn it if this isn't a very comfortable nib to use. Um, I like it a lot, actually. So. Yeah, on mine, I have one of those, too. I really like the nib on mine, too, so it's not, yeah. Yeah, they're pretty good stuff. Am I going to bring it to Pin Club? Yeah, I'll bring it to Pin Club on Sunday. No problem. No problem. Back to the desk. Oh, my gosh. They're all in. <laughs> somebody's, uh, somebody's tagging you in Slack there, Audrey Pants. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. There's something going on on Slack that they want your uh, attention with. Uh, Franklin says, Audrey, get, uh, solve this problem for us. Get off the live stream. Mike doesn't need you. <laughs> How dare he? <laughs> oh, uh oh, somebody's in trouble. Oh, no. In trouble. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'll bring this with me to Pen Club. But this is a totally gorgeous pen. It's a cartridge converter pen. Um, I've got Robert Osher's bronze in here which uh, is a great color for this pen. Yeah, right? That was what I wanted to do. Uh, but uh, anyway, writes very nicely. I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's a very comfortable pen in the hand. It's a little bit bigger than the Franklin Kristoff uh, 03, just a little bit, but uh, pretty good. Actually, I think this might be smaller than the PKS. This might actually be smaller than yours, Audrey, or smaller than the large size of yours. I don't know if I have more but, with me. But uh, anyway, gorgeous stuff. It's the only Arushi pen I have. Oh, that uh, the ink is finally dry. Look at that. Still get, you get a lot of sheen on there. So good job, Wild Pages. Okay. I'm into it. Is he wandered around? Yeah. That's cool. So there's that one. And then uh, something that um, was embargoed until today um, is this. So this is the new Giorban ink from the 1798 lineup, which has silver glitter, as you can see down here. The, uh, the other ones, I forget the, the number, 16-something, I think. Uh, those are all gold glitters, and then the 1798 formulations are silver glitter. I generally like silver glitter a lot more, even though I think I have all of them. So, um, shadow, uh, I'm sorry, I'm reading chat that doesn't belong here. Let me click off. Um, and this is what it looks like. This is the Kyanite du Nepal. Kyanite is a sort of nice blue gemstone. It has a fair amount of silver glitter in there, just even in the swab and in the, uh, the written bits. I use a fairly uh, filtered light for this, um, this stream. Let me find a flashlight. There we go. That's how to do it. Um, you throw a flashlight on there, and you get a lot of silver, silvery glitter action going on. But it's also a beautiful blue. I'm a big fan of this, actually. I think this is one of the best ones I've done recently. There's some more silver stuff there. The partial gold glitter in there. Oh, that's cool, man. Um, <laughs> beast man. 1670, that's what it was. Playing it safer than Brad. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse says, Franklin better be careful. He likes FC pens too much to risk angering you, Audrey. <laughs> so we're about your two shadows. Oh, I guess Evan's bringing it here too. Um, let's see. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Scene. Um, there's two, so we're about two shadow steel FC nibs. One has a silver FC logo, the other has a gold FC logo. I don't know. That's weird. I don't know why that would be. Mine My guess is you probably put an ink in there that stained the 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 it laser cut. So close to me that I can't really. Are there pictures in the slack? Yeah. I mean, it's close. <laughs> uh, let's see. There they are. Yeah. I mean. One might have come from a new batch because we'd had the shadow nibs for a long time, and maybe it's just a, hmm. a variant. Yeah, my guess is that like whatever you inked it up with might have just altered the color a little bit, but could be just a different difference in the batch or something like that. Yeah, my guess is the batch batch difference. We had a new batch just come in, and one might be from the first batch, and one might be in the second batch. I haven't really looked. 
Yeah. Again, I don't investigate things as closely as some people, I guess, so I come to notice, but again. So, uh, Kimberly asks, how does it compare to the other blue shimmer from Ji Herban? Well, let me show you, because I've got both. So this is the Nepal, and then this is the Blue Ocean. So Blue Ocean is the 1670, it has the gold glitter, uh, but it's a much darker blue. It's a very different, uh, very different color temperature going on there. Hold on. This is a dark blue, and this is a much brighter blue. So different blue, different shimmer, different thing. Um, also, I should say, I found... Did I keep the window up? I didn't. There's one from Diamine that we thought might be kind of close. Uh, let's see, I'll show that. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why you got auto, auto modded there, Emily. Um, well, it's called... They linked your live stream, so hopefully people are listening and listen to what the unofficial answer is, <laughs> as in you don't know. So, so this is... So Franklin, if you're out there, I hope you listen. I oh, Franklin is here. He just popped in the chat. There you go. There you go. They both write wonderfully. Just thought it was interesting, a different color. Yeah, cool. Please start referring, referring to Blue Ocean as Blotion. Ocean. <laughs> Done. Um, this is the Diamine Shimmertastic Blue Lightning, um, and it is a much lighter blue, although it does seem to have um, you know the silver sh uh, yeah. shimmer in there. I think it's sh silver, although now looking at this uh, picture, it's silver. it looks a little bit like gold stuff. I think that might just be from the lighting or something like that let's see other stuff it looks like it's looks like it's probably pretty silvery yeah i'm gonna go with it being silver there you go any hoozle so yeah no this doesn't look like any of the other shimmery inks that i have so um let's see uh, i couldn't tell they were different until you held them next to each other oh that's the nibs yep let's see what'd you do now oh you were just uh you were, you were telling audrey to get off this stream because i don't need you Stop it! She brings all the she brings all the boys to the yard. Um, how's Audrey's solo weekend? How was your solo weekend, Audrey? It was good. Yeah. It was good, she says. Yeah. Um, I went out with the animals. Did some resting. Uh huh. Rested yeah. up. Had some naps. Had some naps. That had kind some of thing. Chinese food. It was decent. <laughs> Franklin's out of here. Well, see you later, Franklin. <laughs> Oh, he's too good to be in the chat. Come on. He's probably working, so it's hard to have a video up, I bet. Yeah. Any Shimmer Diamonds RO to compare it with? Uh, I don't have any of the Robert Oster ones, but I don't have any Diamonds that are close to it. So there you go. Well, you don't have any of the Shimmer Robert Oster ones. No, I've never gotten any. I almost bought one this weekend, but then I... I, oh. I think somebody got the last one, or... Mm. I was out of... I didn't have much room for liquidy stuff in my yeah. luggage anyway. And uh, I was almost going to buy that from, who had it? Van Ness had it. And she'll be coming to Triangle, so. There you go. Shimmer Tastic Inferno Orange in a fire hose right now. Looks like someone spilled ink in the bottle of shimmer. Seems good. When it dries, the shimmer is so thick it looks like a pink ink instead of dark orange. Dope. All the boys are in the yard. Thanks, Andre. <laughs> that, was, that was Franklin. <laughs> well, like yeah. said that. <laughs> Franklin did. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, those are my, those are my new acquisitions. Um, it's going good. So yeah, it doesn't look like Blue Ocean. It also is different from Colorverse Cat, uh, which is fun. I thought Cat might be kind of close, but um, yeah, very different, uh, very different blues. So there you go. So I don't have anything quite like that. Oh, I do have the original actually. So um, let me check these out real quick. Mm, nope, still different. The original 1670 Blue Ocean is the one on the top. What am I doing up there? Uh, what are you doing? What am I even doing? I have a thing like this for a reason. Um, so there's the um, Kainite to Nepal, and then these are the two um, two blue oceans. And uh, both of them are kind of navier. The new one is way darker and way more glittery than the original. But if you have the original blue ocean, you can, uh, you've can pretty much got a, an ink with no shimmer because it's barely got any shimmer at all. That's why they reformulated it. People were complaining too much. Uh, Schrodinger is a different one from Cat. So it comes in a set, and one is Schrodinger and the other is Cat. I forget what Schrodinger looks like. I think it's green or something. Do you remember, Rod? I think so. Yeah, I think I it's green. I'm not sure I have Schrodinger, actually. I think I just have a little bottle of Cat that somebody yeah. gave me, like the little tiny bottle. Yeah, that came as a set. Rushimatide also sheens green, so heavily looks like a different color. Yes, it does. 
Um, it isn't, it isn't. I like what you said there. Uh, see what you had to schlep home. Nice. Gotta get them inks, man. Um, I can also, I can hold off because I have another pen show coming up in like three weeks or something. One, two, yeah, like three or three weeks or so. So cool, cool, cool. That's the green one. Yeah, right on. Shimmer's green, cat's shimmer blue. Accurate. Got it. Got it nailed out. Nailed down. So that's it. Yeah, my pen. Your pen. I forgot about your pen. Audrey also got a pen. In fact, um, more pens showed up at the house while I was gone than I bought at the show, which is kind of fun. So Audrey bought this one off of somebody on Slack, and I had completely forgotten green about one it. Too? I missed it. My green one? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. I missed it. Yep. You're busy not being in here. Yeah. Um, let's see. Does this to go down? No, I think it's okay. Lighthouse? Oh, why is the chat broken? Did I break the chat? Hold on a sec. What's up with my chat? There we go. Now it's moving again. Because now it's in the wrong place. There. Uh, let's see. Bring a sample show here. If you want to, Sandra, I'll take it. Three weeks until Triangle live stream. Pretty much. Lighthouse? Not the lighthouse. No. So for Audrey, I don't believe it, says Kimberly. Nice, all the pens, it's true. You see the box from the Visconti Dolly pen. Oh, you got one of those? Nice. That is an impressive box. I don't I don't know how you would even get that home. You have to mail it. Stole three sailors from Franklin this weekend. Good job. So this is the one that she got, which is Anchor Gray. Very close to the lighthouse, I suppose. They're both gray. Uh, but this is a sort of a pale, foggy kind of gray instead of the you know, more dense, graphite-y gray of the lighthouse. I am thinking about getting the lighthouse, but... Um, those North American exclusives are so significantly more expensive that the thing. It, I might I mean, skip it. I would it. like the lighthouse, but man, I, it's hard to pay the North American prices. I just would buy it from Japan. Yeah, but it's a North American exclusive, so. I'm, well, I know, I'm just saying, that's why I'm not having gotten it, because it just actually pulling the trigger on. Yeah, let's see what this that is. It's very hard when I can just, you know, buy some. Uh, here's the slim. Yeah, two twenty for the slim. That's a lot. The finials, the finials is what yeah. Franklin says. I know the clear finials are cool, and I like them. What good is anchor gray if you don't get the clear finials? <laughs> it's fine. Uh, yeah, three hundred is crazy. The finial game is strong. I agree. Yeah. Here's the here's the lighthouse. Like I don't know if I like it. Two hundred twenty dollars. Three twelve for the full size. Oh my. Yeah, in in photos it tends to look black with clear finials, but yeah, it's definitely a graphite gray. Check out your Instagram. Yeah, check out my Instagram. Let's see. There we go. You can follow me on Instagram. Here they are all together. Um, so there's the uh, the anchor gray right here, and then the the lighthouse next to it. It's a significantly different gray. Um, and then there's a couple others, but very nice gray. I like it a lot. So check that out. There. Also, if you're not following me on uh, Instagram, check me out as at Ink Dependence. That's me. I am that guy. Secretly had to open the oh, security had to open the box to see the pen stand. Nice. He'll leave the misery if it's 390. Well, the regular Pro Gear is like 260 something, I think, um, as the street price. So it's. I'm not shocked, but. It is hard to, it is hard to justify. Let me find the Sailor Pro Gear pens, just a regular one. Sailor. Sailor. Two twenty for Pro Gear Slim, three twelve for full size. Yep, that's it. Lighthouse Pro Gear Slim only. Nope, it's both. Franklin. <laughs> he says he's not yelling. He's exuberant. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's what they call it. That's what they call it. Oh, okay. Uh, regular old Pro Gears. There are too many sailors. They're too hard to find on this thing. Did you ever get the Fresca? I never did get the Fresca, no. Nope, never did. Yeah, regular, that's a slim Pro Gear. Yeah, 340 is the uh, 272. I forgot they jacked up the prices. Wolf. So yeah, 340 is the, um, it's just a regular old rhodium and black Pro Gear. I guess that's good if I want to resell them sometime in the future, but 
I mean, this is the, the regular Pro Gear. I like it, but I haven't liked it enough to buy another one because they're expensive, man. They are expensive. What do we got here? Nagasawa Original. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good looking. Uh, thanks, Ali. Andrew? You want that platinum orange? You want the gold trim? I don't I know, don't, man. I no, I just don't like the gold trim. Why did they put the gold trim on? I think I'm gonna skip it. I'm gonna wait until they have a silver trim. I don't know, but I but. might get it anyway. Oh, here's the. Uh, do you have this Harbor Sky one, Audrey, with the blue with the white ends? No. It's only 180 on uh, jet pins. That's not terrible. Still kind of a lot for a slim, but. Oh, I might be able to get it from that one. Okay. Yeah. I could just get the platinum and then that one. You know, just get both, you know? Save on shipping. And then, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 What kind of nib do we get on this, uh, this Anchor Gray? Medium. Hard medium, all right, that'll do. Yeah. They had a medium fine, but Susie had a medium fine. Oh, yeah, you got this from Susie Scribbles, right? Yep. Cool. So, yep, Audrey got two pens this weekend uh, in the mail. I got one. I mean, I only got one. That's true. So, yours cost more. What's yours is mine, Audrey. Mm -hmm. There you go. Oh, you have the you have the, the blue and white one. It's beautiful. I agree. Sandra says get both. See? That's what Audrey's saying. Yeah. Y'all are, y'all are um, a problem. <laughs> That's what you are. Chat enabling more sailor buys. Which yours is mine? Keep telling yourself that. Yeah, well, that's the way it goes. I, I, Audrey can use whatever's in the, whatever's up here, and there are lots of pens just scattered around my desk. Oh all my the time. gosh, I have pen cases all over the office at work, and <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know where. I need to. I need to start organizing. Are those the pen cases that uh, Scott comes by and pronounces that they are contraband? He doesn't say it to me anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I think he just sees it so he knows that I'm like the main pen attic fan mm -hmm. at this shop so he doesn't really say anything anymore yep oh, if, if anyone's else and if anyone else comes by that's not usually there he'll say that that's audrey she has her contraband and, yeah. scarlath apparently needs the uh the kyanite which nobody should be surprised by what? scarlath he needs the uh the blue kyanite one yeah Scarlet. I mean, that swatch you put is really pretty. Now. Right? Yeah. I think it is nice. We got to put that up on the Instagrams today. Yep, we should. Yep. So, yep, I think it is. Uh, it's real nice. So check that out, Scarlet. It comes out like end of June, I think. Check the notes that I sent. The notes that say, "Hey, don't show this until the 10th. A bunch of people showed it like two days ago, but that's yeah, what it goes. Yeah, Brad. Don't oh. throw them under the bus. Oh. Uh, yeah, it says mid-June. I heard somebody say uh, mid-June, like the 26th, which isn't mid-June, but yeah. um, I don't have a specific date. But, yep, yeah, sometime soon. So, there you go. Anyway, it'll be coming out soonish, And uh, I'll buy a bottle of that. Honestly, Skyla should start a glitter ink blog or something. Is the authority on them at this point? I agree. I agree. Scarlet, get on that. Good job, <laughs> Uh, Tony says throwing Brad under the bus is his job, Audrey, so... Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. I'm sorry, Tony. I, you do your job so well, so I shouldn't <laughs> add to... Maybe time for your birthday? Yeah, good. Technically, the 26th is before the end of June. That's true, but it's not mid-June, so we'll see. Mario Maker 2 comes out soon. Audrey's... I'm gonna buy it. Audrey's... Oh, are you? I'm are you gonna it. Are you gonna play it? <gasps> yes. Yep. Did you finish Mario Odyssey? You got to finish Mario Odyssey. Look, we'll make this rule. You finish Mario Odyssey, I'll let you get Mario uh, Maker. Look, I made it well into the game. I didn't love the scroll. Like I don't know that the angles and viewpoints sometimes when I just would die randomly because I try. I don't listen. I liked Odyssey, but the camera angles sometimes frustrated. Yeah, the control is floaty as hell in that game. It's float. That's the word. It's floaty. It's floaty. Thank Super you. floaty. Yeah. Um, that's why I sort of stopped because I kept dying on one spot and it was the floaty aspect and I, I just stopped. You haven't finished Zelda yet either, so you got some you got some gaming to do on your pants. Mm. I never played the Zelda. You did. You need to start playing some Zelda. Oh, I was gonna do the cooking sound, but I it's been so long. I sort of forgot how it goes. <laughs> Me too. 
Those are fighting words. Let her. Yeah, right. I'm going to let her buy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, in reality, I'm a, I'm, I'm a fan of watching Mario Maker videos, so uh, I'm thinking I'll probably. I know. It's so weird. People don't even say that. People are like, that's really weird. No, I think it's weird. You need to play the F out of Zelda. It might be the greatest game ever made. See, I don't think it's the greatest game ever made. Like, I didn't even finish it. I, I think I did, what did I do, two of the Great Beasts or whatever? I feel like I'm just wandering around and, like... You get distracted. And you I get distracted, and then they're like, hey, find me some lightning bugs. And I'm like, where do yeah. I find lightning bugs? And the game's like, screw you, Mike. Figure out where to find them. And I'm like, I don't know if I care. Do them. Like that, you never ignore this. You just do the side quest instead of just... I love a good side quest. Yeah. Need to get back to it? I don't know. And then, like, you're... Like, I, I get a nice sword or a spear or something. I'm afraid to use the dang thing because it's just going to break and it's going to be trash. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't think I I don't think I don't like it enough to deal with the distraction. When you say, oh, you're going to get a knife and it's going to be good forever, I think that's realistic to say you use it enough, it's going to be not good anymore. I that, mean... I think that's good. That's it's, true. And I love the cooking thing. Like, oh, maybe it's going to be a disaster or it's going to be something that gives you amazing stuff. Yeah. The cooking actually is one of the things that frustrates me the most about that game is because you can cook one thing at a time and it takes forever. Let me get a batch like macro or something like make 75 steaks. That's all I want. I don't want to sit there for three hours making but steaks. But that sound is so cute. Uh, Hold on, let me find it. I, you know, Audrey, I'm going to like task you with just like cooking all the okay, crap in my inventory. Tell a story about Fable and how we used to <laughs> Audrey's how I got rich in Fable. Uh, she likes Fable games, but she doesn't care about fighting stuff. And I like Fable games, but I don't care about the making money stuff. And so one of the ways you make money in this game called Fable that hasn't been published anyone in a while, oh my but gosh, it's been a long is time. like you uh, make pies. But making pies is like it's just a series of button presses and stuff. Like it's a timing game, or you pour beers, or you make um, make uh, uh, swords or whatever. And I don't care about any of that stuff. But Audrey is very good at those timing games, and she likes the like boring ass repetitive nature of those things. I have <laughs> And so she's got the patience for it. I'll bring it over here so I can. Start it. So she likes that, and so she would just sit there and make money, and then I would. Oh. Anyway. anyway, that's the uh, <laughs> that's the sound of Zelda. And so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I got kind of, I just kind of fell off Zelda pretty hard. I don't know. I've been playing this game on uh, Switch right now called um, uh, Steam World Quest, which is like this fun little RPG deck making game. Uh, I dig it. You have lightning bugs this year? I bet you do, Julie. No Harvest Moon, Stardew Valley for Mike? Dude, I like Stardew Valley a lot. I've got no problem with that. Uh, but just the, the cooking one thing at a time drives me nuts and... Uh, because uh, well, look in Stardew Valley, I can just set up a bunch of ovens or forges or whatever, and just like set them going. Uh, so it's, <laughs> you have to do the dance when you hear the song. That's the way it goes. Occasionally, fireflies in Colorado. I remember chasing them in your uncle's yard when you're growing up. Not common though, huh? In uh, and around Knoxville, there's this like this huge event up in the uh, the Smoky Mountains where all the all the lightning bugs start. I don't know, lightning bugging at the same time, and they do it in sync. It's a whole thing. So um, yeah, lightning bugs are pretty common around these parts. So. Yep. Uh, no, I play Stardew Valley on the Switch. I've also got Stardew Valley on the PC. I yeah, I double bought. It's a darn good game. I enjoy it. I've never a lot. played it. You should. You'd like it. You live fable and prefer the fighting to the money making. Well, Julie's on my side, I guess. Come up when you move out here, Julie. Uh, just have Audrey make money for you. She will for sit there. Evening, and... I'll just literally sit there and just make money. Chopping some wood, love it. Yep. Bartending, okay. Forging some swords awesome i'll do all that <laughs> yep she's a fan you head home seeing the internet see you evan take care did your console fix so you can go through mass effect again i didn't love mass effect again enough to play it ever again i played i think the middle one but like it's kind of heartbreaking to me when i screw up the loyalty quests i don't know like I, i'm not friends with garrus or whatever and so like that made me sad i don't know it's fine um but uh yeah, so anyway, I became a, a total land baron in Fable because of Audrey. Uh, it's like, halfway through the game, I'm like, well, I guess I'll buy a castle, because why not? I can. So, I thought that was fun. I like the decorating houses aspect. I think that was cool. But I also like just shooting things with arrows and magic or whatever. Did you used to be able to get STDs and stuff in that game? 
you could get STDs in Fable. Yeah, yeah, you could um, do things with questionable people and end up with diseases. How you doing, nose pants? Yeah, he's hopping a little bit, but he's he's not under a bed because we don't let him in the bedroom right want, now. But yeah. you, know. you don't want out. You don't want up. What do you want? What do you want? Gotta befriend everyone so they live. Some of the people I befriended didn't quite live. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I just it's not really my type of game. Virtual STDs. That's and you'd have to go to a doctor and get them to fix your disease. <laughs> so, you know that's cool. But yeah, I liked Fable. Anyway, so I'm playing that. I'm playing. Uh, uh, I got Forager. I'm going to play some Forager on a stream one of these days when I get done with grading because uh, I saw Brad playing it and um, it looks like a lot of fun. So I'll play some of that. Uh, I haven't done it yet, but I will. Um, I'm playing Division 2. I'm playing some, uh, still in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Those are my video game and things right now. Yep. Got Scraggles to walk. Oh. Why, why did you say that? Look at this. I didn't think she'd hear me. Look at those ears. <laughs> That's the look of a dog who wants to go around the neighborhood. Um, she doesn't want to go out now, though. It would be too uh, too sunny for her. I just looked at my, my sad wrist. I was going to see what the temperature was. Um, it's grading hell season. It totally is. I've only got... I'm getting close. 60 something? No, no. I, I, mean, I, was, I was grading for a while. Okay. So um, after you uh, went to sleep. So, uh, yeah. I, uh, anyway, I'll get there. Total ear reaction. Well, half an ear reaction anyway. The other she ear doesn't. doesn't have, yeah, no, the other ear doesn't move a whole lot. So I've seen them both up, but it's very exceptional, and it it's, doesn't seem like she can do it on purpose. Yeah. So uh, anyway. Anyway. Time to go back to making some more nibs. Well, we're gonna go and get some pizza and maybe a watch here soon. So. Well. I can also go and make some nibs in the meantime. She's been making nibs all day in the other room. So, rip Apple Watch. Yep, mm -hmm. Apple Watch is... Apple, Dunzo. <laughs> Apple Watch is Dunzo. This is not how Apple Watches should look. Uh, I took it to the store yesterday because I was like, man, maybe they'll fix it because the battery went floomp and wrecked it. But um, this is actually the very first Apple Watch. I don't even know what they call it now. Uh, it's not even a series I don't one. Think they call like, it any, I think they call it Jump now. <laughs> I think so. And they said, uh, "Hey, do you have uh, do you have Apple Care Plus?" And I'm like, "No." And so they said, "Cool, so um, cool, cool, cool. We don't fix them. We'll just send it. We'll just throw it in the trash and get a new one or whatever. And it would cost. Um, what did I do? I didn't do anything. Um, the um, the. Uh, let's see if I can see it on the desk, folks. This is the. Uh, this is what it looks like. Um, yeah, I can't really see it. There doesn't have enough contrast, but. The uh, the battery just kind of went, whoop, and it pushed the screen up, and now the touch doesn't work. It's junk. So anyway, they said, yeah, we'll replace it for two hundred and fifty dollars. And I said, bollocks to that. I can get a new one, like a new Series Three, for two seventy five or something like that. I think uh, maybe three, but anyway, not not gonna not gonna get an original Series Zero Apple Watch for two hundred fifty bucks. That's nuts. So yeah, it's dead. Anyway, I'll get a new one. I, I enjoy it a lot. It's kind of worth it. Uh, I'll probably get an open box one at, at Best Buy. That's my current plan. Uh, play emulated NES and SNES games. Pretty much the only things your computer is capable of playing. Yikes. Um, I have a SNES Classic over here that I connect to my other screen and play sometimes. I'll uh, get back to that. I've been playing Secret of Mana on that. Or I was. I haven't played it in a little while. But Secret of Mana is on that. I like it a lot. I think there's some Zelda on there too. But... Yeah, so yeah, that's dead. Pretty much all the only thing your computer's capable of playing. I bet you could probably play Forager and some of that other stuff. Your $8 Walmart watch disintegrated on your two days ago. Oh, man. Oh, well, time to get a new one. <laughs> Somebody on Slack posted a picture of their G-Shock watch that they've had for like 15 years or whatever and was hanging on by a thread, and I guess they put it on their wrist, got in the car, and it fell apart. Um, it's been time for them to have a new watch for a while, so... Anyway, um, some people were really surprised that an, oh, the watch gave out, but it's the Series Zero. It's like five years old, and I got it secondhand for my brother-in-law. So, yeah. which you know. she probably never used. So that's it was new. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty much new. But, but uh, yeah, it's been way out of warranty. I think they come with like a one-year warranty, and they knew that battery thing was a thing, so they extended it to like three years. It doesn't extend to five, and I'm not going to hold that against them. So that's fine. 2011 MacBook Air basically has no video card. That's true, but 
Um, it can handle a lot of like the like retro games and stuff. I think it would be fine with it. I mean, that Forager game, when I downloaded it, it was only like... It was under... It was like I think it was measured in Ks, not gigs. Like, it's a little old game. So, you sip that tea? I am sipping that tea. I've been talking so much, I've only drank like half a cup of tea. I'm actually getting quite hungry. Oh, what kind of pizza? We're going to get Mimi's pizza if all goes well. Audrey? Eh? Yeah. So, seems like something that expenses for last longer than five years. I mean, yeah, it was a it was a flaw or whatever. It seems fine. How are they supposed to make money? I mean, you know, look, it was on my wrist for that long, and it had a catastrophic failure. It was working up until the time it blew it up. <laughs> so it was working until it wasn't. Yeah, um, but I mean, I paid like a hundred bucks for it or something. So your favorite game is 1942, the plane game. That's a fun game. I have a really cute dog there. Thanks. Her name is Scraggles Yang, and she is uh, she's been with us for five years now, as of yesterday. And who knows how old she is? We don't know how old she is. She is a mystery dog. They said she was three. I don't know if she was three. Yeah, they said she was like three or four when we got her, but she's grown considerably since then, so I think she might have been younger than that. But look, gray muzzle. Old dog. She's getting old. She's going to die. Oh, no. Stop. Uh, they actually so stopped supporting this watch with software like a year or two ago. So, um, you know, whatever. It's first-gen hardware. It's It was bleeding edge at the time. I'm not worried about it. I think it did its time. So, you know. Yep, she is cute. Um, I think we'll keep her. Well, she's good now. Why would we get rid of her? <laughs> right? Now she's all trained. Super morbid all of a sudden? What? Oh. <laughs> what did you say that was morbid and I ignored? Oh, that she's, in, she's getting old and she's going to die. Jeez. Audrey. What? <laughs> I think she's fine for a while. She's in perfect condition. Uh, she's there's in nothing... perfect condition. What are you talking about? A car? Yeah, yeah. She's, she's in perfect in... condition. She's, look, um, not mint, but she's uh, excellent condition, she's I would say. She's not mint. Oh, she's mint. <laughs> Franklin Tyson, she's going to die. <laughs> no time soon. Sample virus for your group, group buyer label. That's what you've been doing while watching you. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, yep. So stuff coming up, man. It's been over an hour actually. I know. I really um, know stuff coming up. I'm going to be on a podcast in the very near future uh, with if Jenny Reed is going to have me on uh, Two Guys Zero Planners. Uh, that should be coming out in the next like I'll record it next week. It'll probably come out in the next week or so. So check that out. Um, so that'll be fun. My lips are going numb. I'm so hungry. I need to eat something. I'm not going to eat on stream. I do. I had a handful of Cheerios earlier. That's what I've eaten today. We need to go to the store. We're out of food. I was going to have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but our bread is questionable. So, Womp, womp. Mint condition? Uh, maybe not quite mint. She's been out of the package. I'm going to say excellent condition. Scraggles, you excellent? Yes. So I'm going to lay down. <laughs> That's how she stays in excellent condition. She, she just lays and sleeps. She rests. Get that man some pizza. Well, it's going to be a little while for the pizza, I guess, but uh, I'm going to eat it. Get some cinnamon sugars. Yes. Yeah. They're cinnamon sugar breadstick things, and I eat them on the way home from the place. Don't tell Audrey. But... Well, you're not going to today because we'll be together. New old stock. Audrey says, she, or uh, Tony says that she might be new old stock. She was new old stock when we got her, I think. That's true. Forgot to pick up bubble mailers while you're out. Guess you're going back to the store. Yup. Don't go to Target. It'll be $50 at least. For bubble mailers? I mean, I got these at Target. It was like six of them for two fifty or something. It's not a great deal. What's that place you were telling me I should get bubble mailers from? Uline. Uline. Get on that Uline. Uh, they just have lots Sarah? of shipping and packaging. And yeah, Uline is the place to go. I need to actually order some if I'm going to be sending out stuff. No food in your house when you go back from Chicago? That's kind of how it is here. And then we... I was gone, so we didn't do I grocery mean, shopping. Look, I'm not going to sit there and make a meal for myself. It's been too, you know, no. I had some Chinese food, then leftover Chinese food. I didn't want to cook. Nobody wants to cook for one. Make lasagna for one. <laughs> All right, folks. <laughs> Daffer Man says she's looking a little dog-eared. Yep. See what you did there. Don't you have to buy in high quali quantity on Uline? Yeah, you do have to yeah. buy in quantity, but I don't know how many. She's got a group buy going on. I don't know how many things she's sending out. But 
They're real cheap if you, you know, do that. Group buy? What are you talking about? Uh, I don't know. Sarah said she's doing oh, she, sample okay, vials for a group buy. I'm not doing a group buy. Then, yeah. <laughs> if you make a lasagna for one, you get to eat the whole thing, says Franklin. Oh, you only need nine? Yeah, it's not worth it for nine things. Oh, then, yeah. I think no, you have to buy, like... No, not a nine. You don't buy a nine of anything at Uline. Yeah. Let's see what, uh, what's going on here. So the making lasagna for one is a Flight of the Concords joke. It's a reference to an old show called Flight of the Concords. Padded mailers, Tyvek envelopes, glamour mailers. Ooh, let's get some glamour. Glamour. <laughs> Here's some glamour mailers. Uh, look at how glamorous the those are. Bags are the pink ones right there. I think actually this one's the one that uh, Execlair was using. Uh, five by eight and a half. Um, if you buy a case, it's 121. So 250 of them for a hundred bucks or whatever. 120 so, bucks. I mean, it's a lot of money, but it makes them like 10 cents a piece. So that ain't too bad. No, go to the other ones. The other ones are a lot cheaper. Like Tyvek those. envelopes. No, I would go with the. These yeah. are. Protectors. Those for, are just Tyvek. For a hundred bucks, uh, for a hundred of them is 28 dollars it's not bad but those are just envelopes they're not well i'm sending mostly oh. padded stuff so i don't know if i care uh -huh. and if i'm sending a pen wrap uh i don't know white uh 76 bucks for 250 of them <laughs> they're pretty cheap anyway so that's uh shipping shipping talk with mike and audrey oh i know it's so exciting uh it? go to the do oh go to the dollar store for padded envelopes yeah, yeah that's a good idea kimberly we just never remember to go to the dollar store it's where you get the sparkle envelopes. That is true. Yeah, we haven't been to a dollar store in a while. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the pizza. Have a good weekend. I will, Letitia. See ya. Yeah. Ralph used the pink ones for his nibs in the past. Solid choice. Mm -hmm. They're not going to get lost. No. So. All right, people. I'm going to let you go because I'm going to go get some pizza in my belly. That's my, that's my plan. Um, say bye, Audrey. Bye, Audrey. <laughs> bye, everybody. We'll see you next week. Have a good weekend. Peace out. How do I turn this off?